you guys asked and we listened. Today we're starting part three of our eight part series on the toxicity of essential oils with yet another divisive and controversial topic in the essential oil community on should you or should you not use essential oils with your pets? I have here Lacey. She's our two year old Siberian cat. Say hi, say hello, hi. She has these cute little tufts on her ears that people just love. <laughs> okay, this might be harder than we thought. Okay, can we try it again? Here, have some food. And who are you holding? Bella. Bella. Do you know how old Bella is? She's 13. Bella is our uh, three pound toy Maltese. And uh, we actually use essential oils on a regular basis in our home. Uh, if you've seen some of our past videos, you've seen those videos and as we've discussed ingestion, as we've discussed traveling with essential oils, as we've discussed how we use them personally with our family. But today we're gonna to talk specifically about essential oil usage with pets. I'm Adam Wilkinson, CEO of Jade Bloom, and essential oils can be a wonderful addition to your pet's health. Today, you're gonna to be newly empowered in such a way that your pet and your vet will thank you. Now, I'd like to begin our conversation today by addressing head-on some myths being perpetuated by some overly conservative, perhaps, individuals regarding the use of essential oils with animals. In this video, we're gonna cover several important topics. We're gonna to debunk myths surrounding essential oil use with your animals. We're going to look at oils that you should never use around your cats, oils you should never use around your dogs, and general safety tips when using essential oils with animals. So as our team performed the research for this video, we saw a common theme and common myths that were being perpetuated, mostly on personal blogs of people saying, for example, you should never use essential oils with cats. And that's a myth. We're gonna debunk that if that were true, cats would be dropping dead all over the world as essential oil usage is pretty high with people that have feline friends at home. Now to be fair, I think the conservative approach comes from people wanting to keep their animals safe. That's a fair point. We love our animals, we want to keep them safe, but essential oils can provide a wonderful additional health benefit for your animals if you are careful and know what to do, which oils to avoid. We're gonna empower you with all of that information today. As with any controversial essential oil practice, such as ingesting essential oils that we covered in our recent video on ingestion, education and science-backed research are key in making the right decisions. Now, I first became interested in this topic when we welcomed a new addition to our household, Lacey, that you met earlier. I would have held her for this shot right now, but as you saw earlier, she's not in the best mood and I'm not gonna push that with her. But she was a six-month-old kitten. I had heard the controversial what science-backed research had to say about essential oil usage with cats. You know, even though we, we did have an animal already in the house, Bella's been with us now for 13 years, she didn't really ever come in contact with the oils or we weren't applying oils to her directly. We do diffuse oils from time to time uh, in different rooms of the house, but it's not a regular practice and we do take a break even from the diffusing. So now with a cat and a dog in our household, this actually leads us to the most important question of our video today. Are cats better than dogs? The answer is a resounding yes. Okay, before I start getting hate mail, let me just say I'm 97% kidding, but when it does come to essential oils, one of our domesticated animals is a lightweight, and that would be our feline friends. Okay, Bella's been sleeping back here behind me and I just realized I might have offended her with my comment from earlier, so I just wanted to apologize and tell her I'm sorry. Look how cute she is anyway. I would never want to hurt her feelings. You're just as good as Lacey, okay? 
one of you isn't better. So as we stated before, if it were true that essential oils should not be used around cats at all, cats would be dropping dead all over the place and that just isn't happening. So let's take a look at the safety information that we need to understand. First, let's look at cats, and then we'll take a look at dogs. Now that's not to say that extreme care and caution shouldn't be used when using essential oils around your animals, because there are plenty of instances where essential oils have harmed animals. But just as with the cases of ingestion that we reviewed in a previous video, each of those incidences of injury to animals was because an inappropriate amount of oil was used, or an inappropriate oil was used in an inappropriate way. Robert Tisserin actually addresses this himself in an article addressing the use of essential oils and cats. So here's a fun fact. Robert Tisserin actually has a cat named after the essential oil myrtle. It's so cute, right? That actually kind of makes me feel like we missed an opportunity when adorning our adorable kitty with the name Lacey. Lacey, do you consent to a name change? Okay, you shall now be called Spikenard and your abrasive new sounding name that evokes memories of an overbearing aroma will finally garner you the fear and respect you deserve in the animal kingdom, my ferocious feline friend. I love this kitty. She just doesn't like to snuggle. That's her only problem. She's fine, see? If I'm here, no, no, we're not playing. You're, I'm just petting. I'm here, okay. But it's when we try to snuggle, we get smacked in the face. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. This is going down. Okay, goodbye. She's done. Okay, everyone say goodbye to Lacey and all her fur. Anyway, so Robert Tisserand and his cat Myrtle have a history of essential oil use together, and he actually discusses a specific essential oil that's a little alarming, considering this oil shows up often in injury reports in cats, and that's tea tree. He says, I did use tea tree oil on Myrtle once when she had an infected puncture wound. I squeezed out the pus and dripped one drop of tea tree oil into the hole. I repeated this treatment over the next two days and she healed up fine after that. However, an overdose of tea tree oil could be lethal to a cat. I feel this further drives home the point that moderation, education, and thoughtful decision making in terms of weighing the cost to the benefit are vital when it comes to essential oils in your pets. The reason that cats require a little more care in terms of the oils you decide to use on them or around them is due in part to their size, but mainly because cats lack the major phenol UDP glucuronosyl transferase UGT enzymes. Whew! That was a mouthful. Now for the layman, which I most definitely am, cats are deficient in a number of chemical conjugation pathways in their livers that can lead to relatively slower elimination of certain chemicals, making them much more sensitive to essential oils than humans and their canine counterparts. Which is why one essential oil that might be safe for your dog may not be safe for your cat. So now here's a list of oils you want to avoid using on or around your cat. But remember, even tea tree, as referenced by Robert Tisserand earlier, can be safe if used appropriately in terms of dosage and application. This list of oils to avoid for cats comes directly from the Pet Poison Helpline. Cinnamon, camphor, citrus, clove, eucalyptus, sweet birch, pennyroyal, peppermint, pine, tea tree, wintergreen, and Lang Lang. Some other oils to note and take great care with based on their active constituents are clove, thyme, oregano, savory, and cassia, all of which are higher in phenols, which is why they should be used in moderation, if at all. Many species of camphor essential oil are not recommended for use within veterinary and aromatic medicine. Now camphor, as a chemical constituent, can actually be found in small percentages within many different essential oils known to be safe for use with cats. However, the higher the camphor content in an essential oil, the less likely it should be used or recommended for treatments in cats. This is why it's important to know which chemical constituents are in an essential oil and at what percentages. And if you don't know how to read a GCMS report, you should go back and watch our How Much Is Too Much as part of our toxicity series and we actually teach you how to do that. So nutmeg essential oil is another dishonorable mention, but you should consider the following statement from Robert Tisserin. Cats are quite susceptible to toxicity from nutmeg oil, but a small amount of any essential oil and a moderate amount of most will not harm your cat. Other than the obvious dangers of applying essential oils undiluted to your cats or applying an oil that has no business going near your cat topically, 
The main hazards to cats are through respiratory irritation from diffusing an essential oil. We'll address that further at the end of the video in our general safety tips section. So where did this misconception about essential oils and cats come from originally? Well, in our research, we discovered that this could actually be traced back to 1972. There was an article published in a medical journal that phenols are toxic to cats. There she goes. This one research article actually became the foundation for the next 47 years of aromatherapy claims about essential oils being toxic to cats. If we all reverted back to safety norms from the 70s, we'd still be driving our vehicles without the use of seatbelts. Fact check. Seatbelts weren't required until 1983. The bottom line is research from 1972 is actually considered very, very old medical science. If you actually read further into that study, you'll find that it had nothing to do with essential oils and had everything to do with benzyl alcohol being injected into meat products and then those meat products being eaten by cats. Time for the dogs. Bella. Oh, oh, sorry, didn't mean to wake you up. It's now time for the doggy do's and don'ts. I just said doggy do. <laughs> I'm immature, sorry. This list may be shorter, but it doesn't make it any less important because dogs can be cool too. Right, Bella? I guess. You get it? You got it? Good job. The following oils are listed by the Pet Poison Helpline as toxic to dogs. Pennyroyal, Pine, Tea Tree, Wintergreen, and Birch. Bella just left me. She got bored, I guess. Scarlet left me, Bella left me, Lacey left me. But you haven't left me, and that's what's important. Thank you. Oh, maybe she's coming back. She heard her name. Come on, Bella. Jump. Here she is. Okay, good girl. She's switching sides, boring over there. Here we go. So we talked a little bit about what to avoid with essential oils for cats and dogs. Let's talk a little bit about why use essential oils at all with your animals. Essential oils are great for calming, great for fleas. You can help treat skin conditions or wounds. In fact, there are some additional scientific studies that I'll include below showing how essential oils can treat certain skin fungi for cats and dogs. For instance, seborrheic dermatitis is a common skin condition where the greasy areas of your skin become inflamed or irritated. Now this can also affect the ears of your pets and the following PubMed study concluded that some essential oils can be used to be an alternative treatment for your pet's ears. So now as you begin exploring which essential oils you would like to use for your cat or for your dog, let's go over some general safety tips to help keep them safe. When running your diffuser in your house, moderation is key and the same care and concern you would take for small children, you should also take for your small animals. Intermittent diffusing is key. You certainly don't want to run a diffuser 24 hours straight. This is going to do more harm than good and it's going to waste precious oil. So we recommend 15 minutes on, 15 minutes off when it comes to diffusing around your small pets. Here are a list of some physical symptoms you should watch out for when diffusing. Watery nose or eyes. Evidence of burning sensation in the nose or throat. Nausea leading to drooling and or vomiting. Labored breathing, fast breathing, panting, coughing, wobbliness, low heart rate, or low body temperature. So, balance is key. Too much of a good thing is entirely possible. Except try telling Bella that when she's dueling over table scraps with Lacey. Seriously though, just use common sense. Watch your animal's behaviors. Experts don't recommend diffusing all day, every day around your animals. So. Watch for any behavioral changes or anything on the list that we've discussed. Precaution and prevention is key. Don't ever place your diffuser in an area where your cat or dog can knock it over and don't place it right next to where they sleep. Now when it comes to topical application, this is only to be done if you really know what you're doing. There are entire books dedicated to this topic. I'm gonna to recommend a few of them in the description below, but just be sure you're always diluting and you're using oils that aren't on the do not use for cats or do not use for dog list. So dilute, 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 
Under no circumstance do we recommend ever using neat essential oils on your four-legged friends. It doesn't matter whether you have two legs or four legs. Dilution is very important. Never use your oils neat. Let's move on to the next safety tip, and that's a one size does not fit all. Think about the quirks of your dog or your cat and how they differ from each other and how they differ from other dogs or other cats. For example, Spikenard here, the artist formerly known as Lacey, gets the case of the zoomies around 9 o'clock each night where she appears to be running for her life or chasing after her own tail, we can never figure it out. But it's pretty consistent, it's pretty cute. And Bella has her own weird cuteness as well, where she can't eat her food in the bowl or on something hard. So instead, she picks it up out of the bowl, she'll walk into the next room and lay it down on the carpet before she begins eating it. Back to the bowl, back to the other room. Pretty exhausting, but maybe that's why she's still alive. Our pets are all unique, they have their own quirks, and they can respond differently to different essential oils, so it's just important to watch the behavior. And if there's anything unusual, uh, be careful, or stop using an essential oil altogether if it seems like it's putting your animal in harm's way. Now, J. Bloom actually formulated an extremely effective blend of essential oils for repelling fleas and ticks and flies from your pets. It's called Repel. Now this blend of essential oils has actually been pre-diluted in almond oil and it's safe for your pets. But there's a fringe benefit that I don't think many of our customers know about and that it's your pet can look extremely cool wearing this around at the park. So here I have Bella. She's all ready for the park. It's been a little chilly winter and spring here in Utah, but she's looking sexy for the boys. She's feeling good and she's smelling wonderful. This smells like Fruit Loops, by the way. Your Fruit Loops cologne. This does a fantastic job of repelling fleas from her. And you don't even have to apply it directly to her skin, even though it is diluted, if you have something like a bandana or a coat that you can wrap around your dog. So all you have to do is remember, repel the ticks, not the chicks. That's it, my friends. Part three of our eight-part series on the toxicity of essential oils. And I hope you love meeting my pets today, our newly named Spike Nard that's run off, and uh, Bella. Say goodbye, Bella. I'd love to meet your pets, by the way. Comment in the section below, please. Tell me the name of your pet, what kind of pet you have, and if you've actually used essential oils with your pet that's contributed to their health, healing, and happiness, we'd love to know about it. Let's share it with the community. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel and ring that bell so you get alerted, just like Pavlo's dog, to our next installment of the toxicity of essential oils. Say goodbye. 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 She's such a good sport. So long.